Hey, welcome to a special Halloween week edition of Leading Agile Sound Notes. Derek Keith is here. Derek, thank you for taking time out of your pre-trick-or-treating festivities. <laughs> He's already been at the candy. <laughs> um, so we're trying a new experiment today. Uh, we knew we were going to record a podcast and we had some ideas. But we weren't super psyched about any of them. So I sent an email out to... Uh, everyone who's taken a class with me for the last two months, and I said, what questions do you have? And we got a bunch of really good ones back. So we're going to be using them kind of probably over the next couple podcasts. But the, here's the one that we're going to start with today. So this comes from somebody whose name I'm not going to share because I don't want to incriminate anyone, get them in trouble. But here we go. I have a team lead who's skeptical of Scrum, especially metrics related to the process. He doesn't think carryover matters from sprint to sprint as long as we're, in quotes, creating value and getting the program priorities completed. Any advice on how to convince him that metrics can be a tool for good and that the sanctity of the sprint commitment matters? So, Derek, unleash. <laughs> well, maybe he or she doesn't believe that it matters, but I, I beg to differ. You go higher up in the organization, oh, they it matters. And so... Though I appreciate the manager's zealous, zealousness about, uh, oh, Zelios we're just delivering. Zealousiosity. Oh, zealousiosity. Yeah. Zealousiosity. There you go. Yeah. If, you know, I, I love the idea that they're like, well, we're providing value. That's good enough, right? Well, I, I, I question, well, how do you know you're providing enough value? How do you know that? I mean, it's, it goes beyond just providing value. It's like you, just the idea that you could be providing more value and not and maybe not even put forth any more effort but by measuring the system you could actually improve it i mean how how is that a bad thing so i want to get up on my porch and scream at the kids in the street for about, about something different mm -hmm. okay i want to get your i mean i'm upset about the uh not meeting the commitment thing so and that is something i kind of push on in the class like i know we're supposed to use the word forecast but that seems a little flexible to me like i would never say to my wife you know i forecast that I will never run out on you during our marriage. Right. Commit that to her. Um, yeah. So I think that, that when a team makes a forecast, that there is an expectation that they will meet that forecast. If a team cannot consistently find a way to meet their commitments or their forecasts, there's no ability to understand what we can expect will happen. If you can't create a sense of expectation about what will happen based on history, Management has no idea how to run the rest of the company because they can't plan anything. If they can't plan anything, they need to come and help the team. And that's something that I'm always trying to avoid. I think getting to a point where your team can say, we can do this and actually do that, at least on a, you know, most of the time, um, that's foundational to making this stuff work and building the trust that holds it together. The metrics are part of reinforcing that trust as well. But um, the thing that, that I'm most concerned about with that whole explanation is the idea that the team is, is rolling work over consistently that's just a sloppy habit yeah it's it is You're, if they're they're unwilling to make a commitment and they're just sloppy i mean it yeah i they just have to hold themselves accountable i gotta say if you make a commitment and you meet that commitment if you are the one who's making the commitment you're going to feel better about this work but again i mean that's pretty the level is pretty low if they're unwilling to to do that. Yeah. Well, and, and so the, I guess the question is, so you're adding value for the company maybe because you're eventually delivering something. But if the whole point is to get shippable product out of a sprint so you can inspect and adapt, how much value are you really adding if you're not even really doing that? You're just kind of dragging it along. And how much value are you adding for the team if you're not teaching them to be disciplined about picking smaller pieces of work? Yeah. And, and well, are you not inspecting and adapting? Yeah, and well, and there's that adaptation or that improvement. That's what's missing. If you're not measuring it, then how are you going to be able to improve it? I just I keep working through this through my head over and over again. It's I did a class this last week, and we were discussing uh, Scrum and specifically making meeting commitments. And they were saying, "Well, well, it was the same. It was a similar argument." You can argument. say it in the fakey voice. It's okay. Okay, it was the. They wanted to say forecast, and and I said make a commitment. And I said, do you not make a commitment in sprint planning? Do not, you know, see the the fruits of your labor at the sprint review. And if you don't, don't you want to get better at that? And they're like, well, yeah. And uh, the uh, now the comparison I made with it 
was back in the day. So I was, I was with the Navy actually this last week. And I said, you ever run a, a physical fitness test or we called it a PFT. Right. And I said, and I was required to run th- three miles in less than 28 mi- minutes. That was the requirement. And so I could say I forecasted that I, I could run the three miles under 28 minutes, yeah. but I knew that I had to hit it. Otherwise, I was going to get into trouble. And so I would be tracking myself. I'd be measuring myself the whole way, and I knew I had to pick up the pace in order to be able to meet that commitment. Yeah. And again, if I didn't, I would drag my ass across the finish line. I could be five seconds too late, and I would be in trouble. So, And, and how, your whole team's going to be in trouble too if you're late because they, they fail too, right? Uh, no, to draw, the, I'm, it's a scrum. Oh, I'm falling. Oh, oh, I'm falling. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> my point is there is nothing. Metrics are not evil. Metrics are not good. They are not bad. You know, they are just, that's just information. And if you use them for good or bad, that's up to you. But it's, I see it as helpful to help us complete our, our task. I think if the metrics are transparent and present a clear explanation of what's happened, they're inherently good. Because shining that light, whether you're looking at something that is nice to see or not nice to see, is healthy. I think if you say, well, we're not meeting commitments, we're dragging work from sprint to sprint, of course you're not going to care about metrics because the metrics are going to show that you're not disciplined with your teams, you're taking in work is too big, you're not following Scrum, and you're not inspecting and adapting. So how much value are you actually adding? That would be yeah. my if, – if I was going to sit down and have a little intervention meeting with your team lead, yeah. that would be my, my question, line of questioning. Well, maybe, maybe they're doing awesome scrum. Okay. So here's the thing is they may, be make, you know, they may be doing awesome scrum but just terrible, terrible technical practices. And, and, and as a result, they're unable to – maybe they have really bad quality. I mean, Scrum does it. Scrum does not explicitly talk about the quality of your code. I mean, certain quality criteria That's that you true. have to have. That's and true. so, I'm just saying that maybe they're doing great Scrum, but there's something else. But again, they don't know unless they start measuring a few things. Well, and maybe they're also pushing themselves so hard that they're always trying to drive it up a little bit, so they consistently fail because. Not so much with the stretch goal thing, but in the let's just see if we can get another inch out of it. Right, right, you know? right. Which, okay. But then you, I don't know if you'd be shying away from metrics if that was the case. Well, again, metrics drive strange behaviors. I've had had a team who they would always fail their sprint commitment. Yeah. And as a result of it, what they would do is they would undercommit, and then they start pulling yeah. work in later into the sprint and suddenly they had 150 and 200 percent completion ratios because what they showed at the demo or at the review was so much more than what they committed to at sprint but, planning but hey man they're adding so much value dude. Oh, yeah. they're adding so much more value than they were expected to add dude everybody wins here hey man it's all yeah. agile man it's all good <laughs> damn hippies okay <laughs> All right. Do you want to try one more real quick? Sure. Let's try. Okay. So we'll try to do one more. So uh, I got a question from somebody who said, my team seem to have a problem with estimating and understanding the estimating concepts. The team members are accustomed to traditional waterfall projects and estimating everything in units of time. I have, right. I, I've already gone off about this topic in every class, so this is going to be all up to you. How can I help them understand estimating but continue to complete the sprints with no PBIs rolling over? Again, with the rolling over. Yeah, 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 yeah. So clearly, now I'd like to know, what were they any more successful lying in waterfall as they are lying, you know, if they're un, unwilling to uh, estimate in Scrum? I don't say, you know, I, I believe that if you were having a problem with waterfall, it, I, I think it also, a lot of it started with you were making bogus estimates because you didn't feel safe. Sure. And, and again, I've been in, this, in the position where as a manager, I went to a developer and I go, hey, man, how long is it going to take you to get this done? And he goes like, oh, one or, one or two days. And if I went to my manager or my director and I said, oh, yeah, he said he'd get it done in a day. <laughs> All bets are off. I'm not going to get a decent estimate out of this guy again because yeah. I lied to him or I, I, I uh, 
violated his trust. But even if you said two days, he's not really in the problem space yet because he's doing something else and you're asking him this. So that could change as well. Yeah. So I'm hoping that by changing the conversation and getting it away from particularly hourly estimates, you know, into more relative sizing or something like that, we can anchor in more reality than, again, throwing numbers out there individually in hours that are going to be you know, probably so you, very, very specifically, but go ahead. So would you advocate for days then instead of hours, like a, like a more vague sense of time or? Well, okay. Again, you can correct me and slap me with the scrum. No, I, I have, I have my, it's not a scrum thing. Scrum really doesn't care. I have my own opinions <laughs> right. about it. I'm my own opinion much. is that every team I've ever dealt with struggles with the concept of, of relative sizing and story points out of the gate. Yeah. And because they just don't, it's not in their world and they're trying to anchor something in their world. And I said, okay, listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get to something that is, is important to you all. That is the, the goal is to have a sizing structure that is relative to your team and it's, and then you understand it. But until then, what, again, I say, think of it as a team day. Is I say I'm gonna put I'm gonna give you a point and you're gonna think of it as a team day. It's still gonna depend on your team, but as a team you can discuss it and see how many days it would take you. Now that being said, I want you to get away from that as quickly as possible because leadership is going if they walk onto that, they're gonna start backing this into hours again and, yeah. and ask about your team productivity. And I don't want that to happen. But but I said you, as soon as you get through the first sprint or two. You start getting some exemplars pasted up on that wall, and you can go forth saying, going forth, this feature functionality, service, whatever, is worth one, two, three, five points, whatever. But get those exempl exemplars on the wall, and then go from there. Okay, cool. So so I'll, I'll offer my version. What are your thoughts? So I think if you want to use time, that's totally cool. Just use time. But don't call them points. Because points are something completely different, and I and I spent four years hating points, so I feel comfortable in my position now. Mm -hmm. So I think of points as risk, complexity, and effort. And to me, having a vague kind of rough sense of how much risk, complexity, and effort is in an item in comparison to the others mm -hmm. gives me one way of checking the size of the thing. Now I'm going to advocate for taking each PPI and tasking it out in sprint planning and estimating those in hours, so there will be time as well. Mm -hmm. I would like to have a rough sense of how many story points we do in a sprint, risk complexity, complexity and effort, and a sense of how many hours we think we're going to have to work, and then some kind of sense of capacity, how many hours of capacity do we, do we have. Um, to me, that's three different dimensions we can look at to make sure we're not going to over or under commit. And I think that mm -hmm. that is, from what I've seen, the teams that I've gotten, which tend to be pretty kind of slow to slow out of the gate i guess is the right best it. that's a good it's a good way to get started but it is really hard to think about story points and everybody's natural tendency is to turn them into time if you turn story points into time you're saying let's estimate stuff in risk complexity and effort and then let's throw out the risk and the complexity which mm. is unhealthy to me I, I don't see any good that comes from that and that also like you said tends to feed its find its way up the food chain and turn poison really fast so yeah um I understand the hesitation. It's harder and it, it feels like it takes a long time. But I can do, have things that take an hour that are completely exhausting and things that take six hours and aren't exhausting at all. Mm -hmm. I want to know about the tax. It's the toll, I guess, that it's going to take on the team. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Any yeah, and and I, I still want to have a conversation on time, around time, in that, and I think you touched on it, I want to protect individual capacity within the team. Yeah. I don't want one or two people overloaded. And so I do want the team to think about it, at least have the conversation around it when decomposing the work, you know, who's going to, who's going to be actually doing this work. And so there's that outward facing, if you're going to do points, that's an outward for more of an outward facing number. Yeah. And then that time becomes an inward facing number until. So when we talk time, when we go that level of abstraction on, you know, what does it look like when we're trying to reconcile work across teams? Yeah. You know, then all of a sudden point into point into point become a big hot mess. Yeah. And so 
Unless, you know, so you're, unless you're using Troy's tools. Troy's tools will let you do that. <laughs> Troy's tools. Troy, well, Troy McGinnis has Troy, tools. Troy's a smart you, guy. Yeah, and he'll let you look at if they're points or hours or whatever, multiple teams within a, porf, well, within a portfolio, estimating different ways and kind of understand when things will be ready for release. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we should make an app for that. What's that? Uh, we should make an app for oh. that. <laughs> you put that in the backlog for Donald. There you go. Um, yeah. Well, so if you have, going back to the metrics thing, if you have multiple teams estimating different ways, some doing points, some doing hours, how do you, and manager wants to know about performance team to team, Yeah. how do you, what kind of metrics do you look at there? Because this might be part of the problem too. So with one of our clients right now, what we're doing is we're using weeks. And so on a level of abstraction, so we actually ask how many weeks do you think it'll take for something to get done? Or you could say okay. weeks or sprints. And, and the reason why we're having that conversation is actually we're having a portfolio conversation at this point with them. Okay. And it, it's around, we have an investment port, a portfolio of investments, and we look at, we're delivering on those investments at different rates of delivery. Okay. And in addition, we have different costs depending on which teams are working on this. So we can actually know that cost benefit yeah. based on... What's the cost of the individual team as long as you have a stable team okay. and, we have st and we have a stable velocity? Well, then if we can see how many sprints or weeks it takes them to complete things, yeah. well, then we can, we can identify how much it'll cost. Okay. And, and then so then if you forecast what you believe your financial or whatever the benefit is, now we know if it's a reasonable uh, investment. Okay. Uh, but yeah, weeks or sprints are a way to normalize. Again, as long as we... We all believe that it's a seven-day week, or we all agree that it's a maybe a two-week sprint sure. or something like that. Then it'll it works out. So let me see. I want to get your your thoughts about this because one of the things I say in the class is if you want to compare teams, that points is a, a very unhealthy way to do it. <laughs> but if you wanted to compare teams, you could look at percent of forecast met, um, a drop mm -hmm. in defects. You could look at I think JJ Sutherland looks at acceleration in, or an increase in velocity across sprints. Mm -hmm. um, do you kind of look at anything like that if you are kind of pushed into how is team A doing compared to team B? Yeah, I'm really curious about. We talk about are they doing the right thing? Are they doing the right? Are they doing the thing right? Yeah. And so I really want to know if I have this hot shot fast team, what's their quality look like? Okay. You know, how many failed builds do they have, or how many defects are they dis are being discovered right. or failed tests? You know, and are they writing tests? Are they executing yeah. tests? Because they could just be writing just garbage. But they're super fast, and everybody loves them. Yeah. And so I, we have to look at that balance of speed relative to quality. And then okay. let's even back up before that is like, are we even meeting the goal or the outcome we originally were setting out to meet? We could be building something super fast of high quality. And it's not even something that the customer wanted. That's true. Yeah. So there are a few metrics I would definitely look at. And kind of keep them within boundaries. Okay, cool. Well, dude, thank you for doing this. I know you've got to get ready for the onslaught of children so you can pour the poison or fine sugar into their hands. Yay, Halloween. Um, <laughs> if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? You can find me on any of the social networks at Derek Heather. And so you go to your MySpace page. Oh, yeah. Your GeoCities MySpace page. or GeoCities. Yeah, I had a couple <laughs> of them. My friend feed. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Twitter, LinkedIn, in Instagram, LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I do Still? these. Nah, you know, I'm not doing the snap these days. Okay. I am putting more stuff on Instagram only because people just like to see things. Yes. I don't want to read a, a three-page essay on something. I just want to see some photos of things that are happening. Like so, food and drinks. Like, there you go. There go. Or, or classes. It's always nice to see things yes. that are going on in classes. Cool. All right. Well, dude, thank you very much. Uh, and if you've got any questions, you can send them to dave.prior at leadingagile.com. we got a few more, so I appreciate everybody who sent those in. We're going to try to include those in the future. Thanks a lot, and have a very happy and safe Halloween. Woohoo! Happy Halloween. <laughs>